Remember, poliovirus is in the enterovirus genus, in the coronavirus family. And now we're going to talk about the other viruses in the enterovirus genus. And we say other, but really polio is almost eradicated, whereas these other viruses are absolutely everywhere. You've all had them, and you'll all see them many times, especially among kids. So what are they? Let's start with the name game. They include echoviruses, Coxsackie viruses, and enteroviruses. Yeah, the naming here is a little annoying. Enterovirus is the genus, and there are species in that genus called enterovirus. And there are also many, many subtypes of each of these, echoviruses and Coxsackie viruses. And you don't need to know all the subtypes, but you do need to know that Coxsackie viruses are usually divided into two groups, Coxsackie A and Coxsackie B. And you need to know that because when you test for Coxsackie, you usually test for A and B separately. So let's talk about what the enteroviruses can do. So like polio, infection always starts in the GI tract with or without symptoms and then spreads. So where can it go? First of all, the skin. There it can cause hand, foot, and mouth disease. And this is usually caused by Coxsackie A and the symptoms are easy to remember based on the name. It gives you a rash on your hands, feet, and your mouth. And the rash usually consists of small tender lesions, either vesicular or maculopapular. So by itself, this is no big deal. You can also get other rashes, lots of different rashes from various enteroviruses. The next spot that enteroviruses can go are the eyes, where they can cause acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis. And in this case, the virus infects the conjunctivae, which are the mucous membranes lining the eye and it can cause bleeding underneath those, which causes pain and makes your eyes look blood red. And usually this heals on its own and doesn't cause vision loss or permanent damage. Now getting more serious, enteroviruses can also go to the heart where they can infect muscle fibers, which we call myocarditis. And this is very important because it can cause heart failure in someone who is young or who has no ischemic heart disease, and Coxsackie B is usually the most common culprit. Finally, enteroviruses can also go to the central nervous system, where they can cause several diseases. So most importantly, they can go to the meninges and cause meningitis. And in fact, enteroviruses are the most common cause of aseptic meningitis, meaning non-bacterial meningitis. Now more rarely, these viruses can infect the brain itself and cause encephalitis. And last of all, remember that polio is an enterovirus and causes paralysis. And the reason it does so is that it likes to infect the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord. Well, it turns out that other enteroviruses like to do that too. And so they cause what we call acute flaccid paralysis. Enterovirus D68 is often implicated in this. So the obvious question is, why do we seem not to care as much about this as polio? And the reason is that these people usually recover, unlike those with polio. And that's why it's called an acute flaccid paralysis. It doesn't cause permanent paralysis. Now the last thing that enteroviruses can do that you should know about is they can infect newborns, in which case they can cause an especially severe form of disease. And the reason for that is that newborns can't mount a normal immune response. They can't make their own antibodies. Usually they're protected by maternal antibodies. But if a pregnant woman gets an enterovirus infection just before delivering, she could potentially infect the baby but not have time to make and provide protective antibodies against that virus because those take a while to make. And babies in this situation are at really high risk. They can get disseminated infections of the heart, brain, liver, and more. So those are the most important presentations of enteroviruses.